Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's Canvas Workspace Tips and Tricks tutorial, I'm going to go over a couple of the recent updates. I'm using the Canvas Workspace for the PC. That's the version you can download. To make sure that you're using the same version, go up to the Help menu and go down to About Brother Canvas Workspace and make sure that you have version 2.6.0. If you don't, you can go to support.brother.com and download Canvas Workspace. There is another version for the Mac as well. And again, this is the not the browser-based version of Canvas Workspace. This is the Canvas Workspace that I use in my courses, that I use in most of my tutorials. It's the one that you install on your computer. And just in case you're wondering, I'm using Windows 10 PC computer. So when I looked at the updates, when I when I read the documentation of version 2.6.0, there were a few updates and it said about there was a different import, uh, an improvement in import function, a fill page option, and an improved process overlap function. So after playing around with these functions, I wanted to just show you a couple of them which I think are of note. And that the first is going to be the fill page option. I'll start with the video with that and I will also end the video with that. So let's get a shape to, for this to be illustrated. So we're going to get a shape. We'll just go ahead and put a circle on the mat. And I'm going to go ahead and fill the circle with a, with a blue color so it's really distinguishable. Now, it, just so you know, and I like to always cover the big picture of something, you, you can resize it. Let's just, let's just, for example, first resize it. Let's go ahead and resize it too. I'm going to go ahead and make it one and a half inches. And I'm going to keep maintain aspect ratio checked so that when I hit the enter, the, the height and the width change. So the circle is going to have the same width and height. In other words, otherwise it would be an oval, right? All right. Now, you may know this from my courses and you may not. So I'm just going to go over this. I want to, I want to tell you the big picture because you might, before I show you the fill page option, you're going to say, if, if I don't show you kind of the hard way, you're going to say, well, what's the big deal, right? Paper stuff, what's the big deal? Why do you care about the fill page option? So let's say you wanted to make a lot of these circles. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to right click on it and duplicate. Okay, so you could duplicate and you can, you can just make lots of these. You can keep right clicking and you can duplicate and you can keep moving them away from each other. And you can do it this way and you can just go ahead and then and you could select your circles and you could Go down here to the alignment tools and you could align them to each other, to, to the middle of each other. And then you could scroll down and you could make sure that all of them are distributed evenly across the page, uh, distributing the space. Right now it's set to one inch, okay, for distributing the space. And you could do this over and over and you could really make a nice layout and then go ahead and send these to your machine and cut out lots of circles. Okay. so. That's one way to do it, and it's the way I've been doing it for a long time, unless I'm unless I'm on my the machine itself. But let's talk about an easier way. Let's just talk about this new feature. So I'm going to go ahead and delete two of these circles. So we have one circle. We still have that one circle, and it is the one and a half inch circle. In, in case you're wondering how I know that, you can always just scroll up here. These are the pa these are panels, by the way. You have a properties panel, and in the edit panel, the second panel down is where you see the measurements. Now let's use the new feature that is in this new version. Again, that just came out August uh, 2021. That's when this new feature came out. It's called duplicate. So let's use the duplicate fill fill page. It's called fill page, but it's in the duplicate panel. I'm, I'm assuming that because there's a little duplicate section here, that there may be new features coming in the future. That's what I would do if I were a designer. I would create this little panel and I would have a fill page and then later they can add some other things to this panel, hopefully. That's what I would do. So isn't that fun? You can just go ahead and duplicate it and you get this entire page of circles. Okay, now you could save this. Of course, you could save your file. We're not gonna save it right now, but we could save it and we could send it to the machine and we could cut out lots of circles and they're evenly spaced and then if your wheels are spinning, you could be like, well, wasn't this a nice stencil? Yeah, this is actually a nice stencil too because everything's evenly spaced. Okay, so now let me show you something else with this. Let's say if you were to change, um, let me keep, 
I'll just go ahead and get one circle. We'll do, I'm going to delete all these. All I'm doing, by the way, is making a selection and deleting them. I'm going to take one circle. We'll go ahead and change the color for for no reason other than just this, this is a different size circle, so I'll just change the color. We'll make it red. All right, now if we want to change the size, you saw a minute ago when I said when it was one and a half inch circle, I was able to fit 36 on the mat. So if you know what kind of paper you have, maybe you have a limited amount of paper and you want to do some experimentation. So one thing I like to do is I like to test like, well, let's say if I have 1.75, like one and three quarter inch circle, you can hit the tab or enter and it'll make your circle 1.75 inches. If I have a bigger circle, then how many will I fit on the mat? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and you know, test that concept out. Okay, so while I fit 36 before, because there were six circles across, if you recall, now I only have five circles across. And so now I can fit, you know, five times five, which, so I can only fit 25 circles on the mat. So this is a good, this is a good way to like test. If I change the size of my circle and I use the duplicate fill, the, the fill page option, I should say, it's called fill page. As you hover over it there, you can see the feature called fill page. You can see, well, then that's how many I'm going to fit. Now, I wanted to just say something right now that I'm going to go ahead and delete these for a second. I want to just type something or not type something, but um, just say something. I wanted to say something. If you are using the machine itself, okay, what I'm going to do is just change the circle back to 1.5. And I just want to tell you something about this circle. I'm going to go ahead and change it back to blue. Remember that we had a blue circle that was one and a half a minute ago. Now, if I were to use, I'm going to go ahead to the edit and I'm going to use the fill page option. You're going to notice that there's a lot of space between any two circles. See all the space between them. And that corresponds like on the machine, if you were to create a circle that's one and a half inches, and if you were to use a, a medium pattern interval, it would put a space this far away between each other. And it would, you would be able to get, again, the same amount on, a, on the machine itself, you'd get 36. However, you can change on the machine something called a pattern interval. And you can't do that in this software. I haven't figured out how to do it. Even when I go down here to the distribute uh, spaces, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It still does. The pattern fill only gives me this one option. But what, what I can do on the machine itself, which I can't do in the software, is I can use a really small pattern interval. I'm just trying to illustrate a point here, and I'll do it on the machine later. And I'm able to get, when I do that, I'm able to get seven on each line. And seven times seven would give me 49. So there are some reasons you'd want to use your machine over the software. Sometimes the machine does a better job with certain things. And one of those things is utilizing this, the mat space more efficiently, in my opinion. All right, well, let me just go ahead and get rid of these. And again, I cover topics more than once. Okay, so if you have any questions about this, you may, you may just be thinking, I just want to cover something else. It doesn't matter what I use here. It doesn't matter if I use, um, well, here, let's grab a border doesn't matter what shape. I, I used a shape. I used a circle. It could have been a square. Let's put some leaves in there. Okay. And I'm just going to make them smaller. And it doesn't matter what I use. I, if I want to use this duplicate fill page, it will fill the page. It'll go, it'll take everything and put it in the center of the mat. And it'll fill the page accordingly. As many as it can fit. But it does use that big space between between each of the objects. I'm thinking it's using the medium pattern interval, which is a pattern interval of five, whereas it's just that's internally built in. So what I'm hoping later, I'm hoping that in this duplicate little panel here, that we're going to have some more options about putting objects closer together in the future. That's what I'm hoping. So now the next feature I wanted to tell you about, let's go ahead and delete that. So we've talked about the fill page as a new feature. And the next feature I want to talk about is what's called up here in the edit panel, it's it's called the process overlap. The reason you can't see it yet is we don't have any text on the screen. So you may re, you may recall from some of my tutorials, I've done a lot of vinyl tutorials. Let's go ahead and write. We're going to go ahead and write papered chef, P-A-P-E-R, because I'm the papered chef. And I've used this font a lot that I'm going to show you. It's called Mrs. And it's something that's free, and I installed it on my computer. Uh, if you want to know more about installing fonts, I do have a whole entire course on fonts. I'll link to that course. 
Now, and I've done, I've also done tutorials online with showing you how to use vinyl. Now, if in the past when we've tried to do the process overlap and we want to weld these letters together, we may have encountered some troubles. And I've done this live and I've done it recorded. And you may have noticed that I said, well, try welding just a few letters at a time. I'm going to go to make this really big, by the way. Okay, we'll make it really big so you can see. I might have said, oh, try welding just a, a few letters at a time. Try, try welding. I'm just going to make it regular as well. This part of the word, try welding that part of the word. We, we used to have trouble welding, and I know you've probably felt the frustration. I know some of my students said, I'm doing exactly what you're doing, and, you know, sometimes the letters aren't welding. Well, this to me is a game changer. I don't know what they did. I don't know what these engineers at Brother did, but I can tell you that the welding is so much easier. I don't need to do any, like, special tricks. I just type my words. I go up here to edit, process overlap, and I click weld. And magically, the letters are welded together. It's wonderful. I've tried it with several fonts, but there are a couple things to note, and I just want to type out my paper stuff again. I'm going to tell you why you're doing this, and I want to tell you like a couple things to note that if you don't, if you were going to use, I'm going to use a font that is a script font. That's the type of font you'd weld together. But notice, I saw that it was on bold. I'm going to make this really big so you really understand this concept. Watch how these letters overlap naturally. See how this E and the R are overlapped naturally. But when you make it bold, you're going to end up having some problems. Let's don't, don't make it bold because see how the, the E and the R, for example, are not going to overlap naturally and they're going to look funny even if you do weld them. In fact, let me weld them so you can see what I'm talking about. That would be a best way to teach you this concept. Go ahead and edit process overlap weld. See how they're not, it's not going to line up properly. So I'm going to go ahead and hit undo and just go back to just telling you that you should not make anything bold. You can, I mean, we can do what's called an offset if you want to bold something. Let's make it regular. When you're going to weld something, weld. Just weld the, the regular font. Whatever font it may be. I'm using Mrs. Font, and you can use any of your script fonts. When you weld them together, make sure it's regular. But in the past, we had to we had to take this part, and we had to weld the A-P-E-R-E-D. Then we had to weld the H-E-F, and then maybe we would nudge the little C to the H, and it was, it was just a lot of work we had to do, and I'm so glad that they did this improvement. And if you didn't have those troubles, then it's because your software was working properly, and sometimes mine was too. All right, so let me just tell you why you're welding and what that has to do. You know, why would you have to weld? So if you were not, if you were to take the script font and you wanted to cut this out in vinyl, if you don't weld every little thing here, the A, even, let me, let me zoom in really, really big. All of these little things would cut out in several little pieces. You'd have a hot mess. This little piece would cut out. This little overlapping piece. This letter P, this E. Then it wouldn't even connect to the R. You would be sitting there trying to glue pieces together and there'd be no smooth piece. When you weld, when I'm going to go ahead and weld again while it's really big, I'm going to go to edit, process overlap, and weld. When you weld, you now have just a couple pieces of vinyl to work with. If you want to then take this letter and weld it to the rest, I don't think that would look right, but you could. But maybe the C would look great. That You could weld the C to the H. And that would be fine. Of course, you'd have to make the C a separate letter. But you see what I mean? Look how many fewer pieces you have to deal with when you're working with vinyl. So that's what I wanted to show you. Now let me go ahead and zoom back out. And I want to show you a couple more things. We're going to go, we're going to go full circle back to the pattern fill. Now I'm not sure what other things were improved in the process overlap. Because all it said in the updates is that there's improved process overlap functionality. But it didn't really say what. I'm telling you what I've noticed, that the welding has improved. I have used these other ones as well, but I didn't notice any difference. I used the other process overlap functions. I didn't notice any difference with them, but if you've seen differences and improvements, by all means, share away. And well, especially in my Scan and Cut user group where we get you know deep into questions and answers and stuff. All right, now, I put down here that I was going to show you the size of this. So if you were to say, let's go over here to, we're in the edit panel. And for example, I have the word paper chef and it's 11 and a half inches. Okay. 
11 and a half inches. And then I want to use the duplicate fill. I get this error message, and that's what I wanted to show you. It says the selected shape is too large, unable to fill with pieces of shapes. So I found out that just from experimentation, that if it's something is more, even though it looks like it fits to me, see, 11 and a half, it looks like it fits within these red lines, these red border lines, then it's, it's still not, I'm going to even nudge it around. See, it still is not something it likes. So then I went down to 11.4. That didn't work. I tried 11.4. That didn't work. So I didn't, I tried 11.3. I think that was okay. So then I just, but I like to work in quarter inches. So I just went to 11.5 width like that. Just that little bit of difference. 11.5. And then I was able to, when I click duplicate, see, I was able to duplicate. So I just wanted to let you know that some, if something is more than, let's just say 11.25 or 11.3 or say, you can't duplicate it, it won't let you, okay? And then you might be saying, well, Paper Chef, that doesn't really seem to save a lot of space, right? But at least it gets you there and you can sort of, you know, move these up yourself. And I would say, you know, maybe you're right. It doesn't get you there. It doesn't, it doesn't efficiently fill the space like it would if you were on your machine. However, you can do it yourself. You can, you can just sort of use the fill as a starting point and then you can sort of make them close together. See how many you can fit. In this case, I'd be able to fit four because the fifth one would be, would be too tight. So, so you might want to just kind of use what I'm saying is start out with your duplicate. Maybe you're like, well, the spacing is too, is putting too much space between items. And then you might want to distribute the items yourself and align them and distribute them yourself. And this is, this is adding some space between them, but see how I can manually add extras even though I started with the fill. So when you're all done, you could send this to your machine, and we've talked about that before, but in case you're new to the scan and cut, you're just gonna export or transfer this to your machine, and there's other videos about how to hook your machine, how to make your machine talk to the software. But I always transfer files via the internet, and then you could cut these out in vinyl, or draw them, or whatever you were gonna do. Right now they are set to cut, because when you click on them, there's the little I call it my little scalpel, but it's really a little blade, but to me it looks like a scalpel. These are set to cut, but your machine, you can also set them to drawing lines, and your machine would draw these, et cetera, et cetera. So I hope you like these new features. I hope you'll give them a try. You can duplicate anything from your text to your shapes to your borders, and if you have special items that you've installed, like, for example, my stamp collection, that's these are shapes from my stamp collection I can I can duplicate those whenever you duplicate it does a nice centering job if you were to have two shapes welded together like text was inside here maybe this is a party favor duplicate everything you could draw parts of them cut parts of them imagine the possibilities for making multiple invitations okay or imagine how much paper you're going to save doing this by experimenting first. How many can I fit efficiently on a piece of paper? That's gonna be really nice for you to try out. All right, so I hope you enjoy the, the two features that I demonstrated, fill page and how I demonstrated this process overlap weld, but there are other process overlap functions which I cover in detail in my Canvas Workspace A to Z course. I'll link to that in the description of this video. That's all for now. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, suggestions for future Canvas Workspace tutorials and courses, which I'm working on. This is the Paper Chef. Thank you for watching today.